Most businesses celebrate Black Friday. It's probably one of the biggest consumer days out of the year. However, with Dossier, they're celebrating the entire month of November. That's right, there's still several days left and they have discounts starting at 20%, going all the way up to 50%. That's half off of already low prices. You can't get much better than that. And I really like that idea of being inspired by something as opposed to just copying it. I suppose there's nothing wrong with specifically copying a fragrance and saying, hey, this is Eros the Lesser or whatever it is that you're trying to, to copy. When you're talking about- There are many things that I would like to say to you, but I don't know how, but maybe. You're gonna be the one that saves me. But I respect an inspired by because really when you think about it, if a fragrance uses another fragrance as an inspiration, it can take a particular component, let's say the mint in Versace Eros. Instead of being an exact Eros copy, taking the mint, giving a little bit of push and oomph and creating something called Ambery Mint. And that's exactly what Dossier did. They created this, this is a 50 ml bottle. Each bottle comes with its own little sample vial that you can try out first to make sure if you like it, if you don't like it, you can return it for a full refund. But what I love about this, this particular one here is inspired by Versace Eros. And when you smell it, it's okay. So it's definitely very Eros-like. The mint in this is amazing. It seems a lot more organic than does Versace Eros, to be quite honest. Now I'm not a big Eros fan, I don't wear Eros all the time, but I've actually been wearing this a little bit more than Eros because I really like it and I think you'll like it too. If you like fresh, high quality, natural essential oils, that's one thing I like too about Dossier. Each fragrance comes with its own card to tell you the fragrance that inspired it, tells you a little bit about it as well, about the ingredients. Pleasure. Not only does Dossier cover the most iconic designer fragrances out there, but they also cover the super popular niche fragrance as well. For example, Ambery Saffron is a fragrance inspired by the iconic niche fragrance, Baccarat Rouge 540 by Maison Francis Kirkchon. Captures the essence of the fragrance so, so very well. I really want you to check this one out when you get an opportunity. If you guys want to check out any of these offerings, Dossier has a ton of new ones as well coming up for Black Friday. You might want to check their website out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Along with the discounts, you get an additional 10% off by using Studio Sense 10. Dossier, check them out. What have you got to lose? Definitely not money. There's a 100% money back guarantee. Hello everyone, I'm Tommy with Studio Sense. Today, as you can see, my video is coming at you from a little bit different point of view or location. I'm actually right across from where I live. There's a swimming pool that they've shut down for cooler weather and our entire block is currently out of power. So that forced me out of doors. I'm gonna use the natural sunlight and that's why I look like I'm blind because the sun is shining in my face right now. But this is the best POV for you. So we're gonna power through and get through this list together. We've got 10 fragrances that we're gonna go over that I consider kind of, sort of, the best of 2020. Starting from 10 to the number one fragrance release of 2020 in this humble reviewer's opinion, at least. So let's jump right in. The first fragrance we're gonna be talking about, the first of the 10, which happens to be our 10 out of 10. Of course, the titular Polo Red. I was a little bit harsh when this was first released and I gave it kind of a thumbs down, but I have been wearing it. It is an Eau de Parfum concentration. It actually lives up to its name. As an Eau de Parfum, it has a pretty good longevity. It does have a decent sillage trail. The only problem I have with this is it's slightly synthetic. This has red grapefruit, cranberry, elemi resin, apopanax, among others, some resinous, uh, and synthetic note. I really enjoyed the Polar Red Eau de Toilette, actually a little bit more than the Eau de Parfum, but this being a 2020 release, it made my list as number 10. Coming in at number nine is also a red fragrance. It's from the house of Perry Ellis. Now this fragrance was released not that long ago. There wasn't any fanfare. There was literally no marketing materials because it's Perry Ellis, who cares? This happens to be one of the fragrances that I enjoy wearing on a very casual, low level, low impact basis. 
This is a really nice fall fragrance, super refreshing with finger lime, red apple, mahogany woods, tonka bean. It's a slightly sweet, very red, very crisp, and it's a nice refreshing masculine fragrance. When you want something fresh out of the shower or when you're just knocking around the house, very casual, not anything to write home about, but it's still a nice 2020 release, and therefore it makes my number nine spot, Perry Ellis Bold Red. Coming in at my number eight spot was a fragrance that kind of surprised me. It surprised me that I found it at the price that I did. I paid 25 bucks for this fragrance, and right now you can't find it online for less than around 70. It's an Abercrombie & Fitch fragrance. First Instinct Together is a very citrusy, sweet, it's a very citric fragrance. This is extremely reminiscent of Yves Saint Laurent Y, either the Y Live or Y Eau de Parfum. It's really that good. It's super fruity, super refreshing. It's got a very youthful vibe to it. If you're a younger person out there and you're looking for a new fragrance signature and you're kind of tired of the other offerings out there, give First Instinct Together a try. Green apple, pineapple, orange blossom, lavender, cedar, tonka. But what's most enjoyable about this and what's most memorable is its fruity heart. It actually is, as an eau de parfum, a very long-lasting fragrance. In the performance territory, it's really well done. In the unique category, not supremely unique, and therefore, it makes my number eight spot. That is Abercrombie & Fitch First Instinct Together. You know, they say absinthe makes the heart grow fonder. Wait. Coming in at my number seven spot is Coach Blue, yet another blue fragrance. You've got lime, you've got absinthe, you've got some ozonic notes in here. And then of course you've got the modern amber and cedar. Amber and cedar are a very nice modern woodsy combination and duo. And you see that in a lot of fragrances. You'll see that in a lot of these 2020 releases today. Coach Blue is a standard blue fragrance with a little bit of difference with that absinthe note. It's very, very enjoyable. The only problem is performance. It's very obvious this is a note of toilet concentration. It doesn't last a supreme long time but while it's there it's very enjoyable and it comes in obviously a hundred mil bottle use it up because you'll want to you don't have to worry about overspraying on this one therefore coach blue makes it into my number seven spot for 2020 releases coming in at my number six spot it is an Yves Saint Laurent fragrance in the Y line and of course it is Lemon, ginger, pepper, geranium, peppermint, juniper berry, lavender, cedar wood, and a surprise ingredient or fragrant note, frankincense. <laughs> so this is a super fruity, bright, sunny, lemony with frankincense. So I do like that fact that they put frankincense in here. It's not super noticeable. Uh, you can't really break it down with your nose and since it's basically there as a fixative to kind of pull things together and bridge the gap from note to note and I think it does that really really well. This is a super fruity but bright on the lemony side. A little bit of Jupiter, Jupiter, a little bit of juniper in there. It makes it kind of acerbic, bright and intense. Kind of closes the gap on fruity, vivacious, bright, energetic and it just kind of it completes the circle that Y uh, Eau de Toilette, Y Eau de Parfum, and Y Live created. This completes the circle, and therefore, it's made my number six spot in top 10 2020 releases. All right, guys, we're down to our top five when it comes to new 2020 releases. I really wanted this fragrance to be a lot more than what I think it actually is. While I think it's a really good fragrance, it still carries some of that DNA in the original Dolce & Gabbana, the one. Of course, I'm referring to Now what they did is they took the one and they made it into an eau de parfum and everyone was pleased. It was like, this is what this should have been. So this was gonna be kind of stepping it up a little bit further. And they just made it a little bit darker and slightly more resinous. All the best traits about the one EDP is in the one EDP. You're not really gonna get that in here. You do get that reminiscent. You can tell it's related. You can tell it's a sister fragrance. Neroli, Cypress, Cardamom, Cashmerin, Clary Sage, Black Leather patchouli and labdanum make up the actual notes in this fragrance. It does give a little bit more hang time to that leather note. So a combination of leather, labdanum, and patchouli. And if that's something that you really like, you might vibe really well with this fragrance. My number five in 2020 releases, Dolce & Gabbana, the one intense eau de parfum. Hugo Boss released a great 2020 fragrance called
bergamot, apple, clary sage, Madagascan black pepper, cinnamon, cardamom, nutmeg. This one grows on you, in other words. When you first smell it, you're like, okay, it's spicy, it's got that apple accord in there, it's warm, it's uh, also got a little bit of citrus, and it takes that boss DNA and it adds a little bit of a modern twist or spin to it. On the dry down, this is a most elegant fragrance. So dressed up or casual, it's very comfortable in either shoes, and I really like the hyper versatility. This is an all weather fragrance, perfect for cooler weather though, and can be a signature scent. And that of course is why it made my number four spot, Hugo Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum. We're down to our top three of 2020 releases in my top 10. This is a brand new fragrance, obviously it's a 2020 fragrance, but it was recently released not that long ago. I've had the opportunity to give this fragrance a lot more wear lately. And of course, referring to the fragrance that was released in celebration of 20 years of fragrance and music in the industry for John Barbados. Of course, Roman numeral XX equates to 20. So John Barbados 20, literally. Of course, one of my favorite notes making another appearance in here, a guest appearance of Red Apple. So Red Apple being a cameo in a lot of these. You've got black currant in here. You've got sage as a spice. You've got geranium, white violet, sandalwood, cedarwood, and another cameo appearance by a really nice fragrant fall note, and that is a coffee note. Supremely masculine, hyper versatile, fantastic fall fragrance, but a great all weather year round signature scent as well. And that's why it comes in at my number three spot, John Barbados XX. Coming in at my number two spot is a release earlier this year that uh, kind of surprised everyone just how good and substantial it's ended up being is from Jean-Paul Gaultier and it is So it took Lamal, the original Lamal, which is a staple or iconic fragrance to many people in terms of being a, a clubbing fragrance, just an all around really good lavender centric, sweet bubblegum type fragrance. It took that and it grew up, it, it put some big boy pants on, it modernized itself. In doing so, it became a lot more versatile, a lot more rich, a lot more multi-layered and complex. They're very well choreographed in this fragrance, therefore it makes it very, very versatile. You can wear this dressed up or dressed down. Primarily, it's a casual fragrance, but it does have a sense about itself of uh, not quite as playful as the original Lamal. Top notes of cardamom heart note of lavender and iris with base notes of vanilla and oriental woods. This is a little bit more mature than the original Lamal was. Therefore, it's a fantastic fragrance release and that's why it's my number two in 2020 releases for this year. Lamal Le Parfum, Jean-Paul Gaultier. We're down to our number one, what I humbly think is probably the best designer release this year has seen. It is from the house of Versace and you guessed it, it is. Yes, just like Lamal, it's almost like the sons have grown up together and they've decided to be a man. So the maturity level of this fragrance is very, very admirable. It took the original Eau de Toilette version, it maturized it, it made it I have a bird there telling me to get away. Eros has extremely high quality ingredients. As soon as you spray it on, you get a, a burst of lemon, that original lavender. You've got spearmint. You've got, again, another one of my favorite cameos, candied apple. Takes front and center stage in the burst of juicy opening in this, and yet still retains itself in the heart and a little bit into the dry down as well. And that's what I really like about this. So it's the very, very same as the original Eau de Toilette. It's just a true Eau de Parfum version of the original formula. And that makes it a little bit more mature, a little bit longer lasting. So in the territory of performance, this one outshines Eros all day long. Very, very well done. It's really nice to see a comeback done well and done right. And that's why Versace Eros, the Eau de Parfum version, comes in at my number one spot in 2020 new fragrance releases for designer. Thanks so much for stopping by and checking out my top 10 list of 2020 releases. As always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with StudioSense and I'll see you tomorrow.